The Dongfeng-17 hypersonic missile of the Chinese military, known as the People's Liberation Army PLA, is considered a nightmare for existing anti-missile systems. Even the formidable US military acknowledges the immense challenge in intercepting the Dongfeng-17. However, Taiwanese media have claimed that Taiwan's Tiankung-3 anti-missile system can precisely intercept the Dongfeng-17. Insider sources reveal that any missile capable of altering its course mid-flight, not just Taiwan's Tiankung missile but even older systems like the Patriot, could intercept the Dongfeng-17 using the latest methods. The interception of Russia's Kinjal hypersonic missile by Ukraine's Patriot-2 in 2023 corroborates this. A low-cost upgrade could render China and Russia's multi-billion dollar missile investments futile. On December 15, 2023, Taiwanese media reported that the National Chengshan Institute of Science and Technology's development of the Qiangong missile had completed its initial operational test and evaluation on August 18, successfully intercepting a simulated PLA short-range ballistic missile. The Qiangong missile might even be capable of intercepting mainland missiles with variable trajectories in the future. This announcement sparked a frenzy online across the Taiwan Strait, raising questions about whether Taiwan's Qiangong missile could indeed effectively intercept the PLA's seemingly invincible Dongfeng-17. The Dongfeng-17 is a hypersonic ballistic missile developed by the PLA from the Dongfeng-16B tactical missile. Its most notable feature is its hypersonic glide vehicle warhead. China claims the Dongfeng 17's range reaches up to 2,500 kilometers and can change its trajectory during high speed flight. The anti aircraft systems used by the US, Japan, and Taiwan, including THAAD, Standard Missile 3, Standard Missile 6, and the Patriot missile, reportedly cannot intercept the Dongfeng 17. The prevailing technology in missile defense currently employs a multi tiered interception approach. This system utilizes long-range interceptors to attempt an initial interception during the early to mid-stages following a missile's launch. In the event of failure, short-range interception systems are then employed. Systems such as the THAAD, Standard Missile 3, and the Patriot missile are activated to attempt another interception as the missile approaches its intended target. However, this requires advanced radar and guidance systems to continuously detect and track missiles, then relay the information to a command center for processing, which in turn guides kinetic interceptors to strike the hypersonic missile directly. The challenge with hypersonic missiles traveling over the speed of Mach 10 is that they appear as mere blurs on multi-tiered interception system radars. This is due to the radar's active illumination of the target and its reflection, leading to inaccuracies when the object exceeds Mach 10. Even if the radar locks onto the missile, the command center might struggle to process its trajectory and position in time, making the Dongfeng-17 a significant threat in the eyes of Western countries, much like Russia's Kinjal. China believes its massive investment in hypersonic missiles is justified, as intercepting such missiles may only be possible with future high-energy lasers, which the West currently lacks in terms of wattage and stability. Effective interception might not be feasible until at least 2050. On August 21, 2022, Russia's defense minister announced multiple successful uses of the Kinjal hypersonic missile in Ukraine, with US-provided air defense systems proving ineffective. This fueled excitement among netizens from Russia to China, with ultranationalists proclaiming the invincibility of speed. Claims were made about the Dongfeng 17's potential role in a cross strait conflict. The US Department of Defense's plans for a hypersonic glide vehicle HGV defense system concept are not expected to be operational until around 2025, creating a sense of urgency for the US military. The Missile Defense Agency, MDA, is developing not only defense systems, but also the hypersonic and ballistic tracking space sensor, HBTS says, for detecting long-range HGV launches and establishing their trajectories. NASA welcomed this development, planning to use the Ballistic Missile Defense System's Advanced Overhead Persistent Infrared Architecture BOA, at ground stations to receive HBTSS's target data for real-time calculations and trajectory establishment, guiding the ground-based interceptor GPI, for interception. 
However, upgrading the HBTSS satellite's infrared detection capabilities remains a challenge. The U.S. Air Force's launch of the X-37B orbital test vehicle, which stayed in orbit from May 17, 2020 to November 12, 2022, a total of 908 days, sparked speculation among Chinese military experts about its mission, which included enhancing the infrared detection capabilities of HBTSS satellites. Meanwhile, the explosive growth of generative AI has provided advanced continuous infrared architecture computations for the ballistic missile defense system, enabling faster and more accurate target analysis and interception predictions. So, how would the Tiankung-3 and Patriot missiles intercept China's Dongfeng-17 missile? It begins with intelligence exchange between Taiwan and the US, providing crucial data on the Dongfeng-17's trajectory post-launch. The U.S. military plans to use pairs of HBTSS satellites to collectively track a target, enabling the BOA to calculate the missile's trajectory through triangulation. The BOA's ground facilities are now capable of continuously receiving target data relayed by HBTSS and conducting real-time calculations. Unlike ground-based radar stations, which can easily lose lock on the highly maneuverable Dongfeng-17, the space-based HBTSS satellites have a high vantage point, allowing them to maintain a lock on the Dongfeng-17 with a high update rate, sufficient to support ground-based firing control. As the interceptor ascends into space, ground-based C2BMC command and control vehicles continuously receive integrated data from the BOA sensors and transmit it to the in-flight interceptor, updating the interception point. A significant improvement of BOA includes its ability to synchronize and utilize data from forward-deployed phased array radars. With the assistance of AI-powered detection software, the system can more precisely track the Dongfeng-17 in flight, guiding the interceptor with two-way communication and further enhancing interception success rates through data exchange between BOA and command vehicles. Updating the entire system to handle data connection speeds with the BOA can surpass the current hypersonic missile's trajectory changing capabilities. The U.S. selling BOA access to allies could be highly sought after by many arms manufacturers. For instance, Israel's Rafael Advanced Defense Systems has announced a new hypersonic air defense interception system, SkySound, similar to Taiwan's Tiankung system. These significant advancements could reduce the threat posed by hypersonic missiles. This significant military technology development was immediately deployed to Japan. In March, U.S. MDA Director Vice Admiral John Hill confirmed that the U.S. is collaborating with Japan to develop a new GPI, specifically for intercepting hypersonic missiles in their glide phase. As reported by Japan's Yomiuri Shimbun on August 13th, this collaboration has been finalized. On May 16th, Ukraine's defense minister announced their air defense systems had successfully downed six of Russia's most advanced Kinjal hypersonic missiles the previous night, validating the U.S.'s latest interception capabilities in Ukraine. Seeing Russia's Kinjal missile faster than the Dongfeng-17 being shot down by the Patriot system left Chinese President Xi Jinping green with envy. Xi had spent over two years manufacturing and deploying the Dongfeng-17 efforts that now seem to be in vain. On July 23, 2023, the South China Morning Post cited a U.S. military report that China had deployed Dongfeng-17 and Dongfeng-26 missiles, both nuclear-capable, along its southeastern coast, replacing short-range missiles used in the August 2020 military exercises around Taiwan. This missile upgrade, planned since late 2020 and fully implemented in 2021, was deployed along the coasts of Bohai, Yellow and East China Seas by 2023. The PLA has three types of hypersonic missiles. The land-based Dongfeng-17 with a range of 2,500 km. The Dongfeng-27 with 5,000 km, both in service since 2019 and 2021 respectively. The Dongfeng-17 targets U.S. bases in Japan and South Korea, while the Dongfeng-27 aims to deter U.S. aircraft carriers from entering the second island chain, especially the Philippine Sea. 
Additionally, the YJ-21 missile is launched from the Type 055 destroyers. Current international diplomatic actions are merely efforts to buy time for further military deployments. Once complete, conflict seems inevitable, with the PLA's thousands of missiles likely striking first. Given that these missiles are wave rider hypersonic vehicles requiring space gliding, they are prime targets for the US's upgraded interception technology. The PLA could react aggressively with a barrage of missile launches. To counter such a missile barrage, intercepting them during the glide phase alone is insufficient. Preventing the missiles from launching is crucial. There was a near incident, but the perpetrator remains unclear. Last year, a report from Northwestern Polytechnical University garnered widespread attention. The report revealed a secret base at the university, ostensibly an aerospace laboratory, but actually a research facility for the PLA's rocket force. Focusing on high-end projects like the Dongfeng-27, Dongfeng-17, and Changying-1 rocket-assisted torpedoes. The report said that the base suffered severe hacking attacks. Technicians found multiple code segments altered in their systems. Initially thought to be random, further discoveries of targeted modifications raised alarm. Unable to counter this challenge internally, the university sought help from the General Staff Department's Cyber Force in Shanghai, known for their expertise in national cybersecurity. Following an investigation by the General Staff Cyber Force, it was discovered that specific ports in the system would automatically open at certain times, allowing hackers to enter and modify code while bypassing all network security monitoring. Shockingly, this code modification was not limited to just one location at Northwestern Polytechnical University, but spread across all missile bases of the rocket force related to the university, affecting Shangxi, Gansu, and Xinjiang. The report also noted that some poorly written or erroneous code was corrected during the modification process. Faced with such a complex and sophisticated cyber attack, even the top experts of the General Staff's cyber force felt helpless. They decided to use computer simulations to analyze the potential consequences of the hacked code. Astonishingly, the altered code actually changed the missile's launch program, including a series of processes from issuing launch commands at the base to communication systems and inputting strike coordinates. Any launch command would be executed in reverse, meaning the missile would target the source of the command. For example, if a launch command was given from a specific location, even missiles deployed on submarines would target the command's origin. This revelation greatly alarmed the rocket force internally, but for some reasons it was not reported to Xi Jinping. However, she learned of the situation through internal channels and harshly questioned and reprimanded the rocket force's senior leadership. The question arises as to how such an advanced cyber attack was implemented. The rocket force's secret base network was completely physically isolated, not connected to the internet or any other network, and used domestic INSPER servers. The report from the Northwestern Polytechnical University suggested that the problem might lie in special chips used in guidance systems of the Dongfeng-17 missile. These chips were imported from the United States, indirectly procured from Taiwan through a private company in Dongguan. The chips contained two layers of communication protocols. One was the conventional, visible protocol, the other was a more fundamental and uncrackable protocol, which might have included backdoor programs and various spyware. These chips were embedded with code at the time of purchase, enabling them to implant a worm virus code without needing to communicate with the outside world. Before being installed in missiles, the chips were checked, and the upper protocol appeared normal. However, the deeper protocols were already manipulated and undetected. Once installed in the missile systems, these codes could activate automatically, reversing the invasion of the entire system. They could not only change the missile's trajectory and remote control, but also initiate a self-destruct program destroying all data of missiles researched by Northwestern Polytechnical University in the Dongfeng series and Changying series, nullifying decades of effort. This incident is considered one of the most severe leaks and cyber attacks since the founding of the People's Republic of China, leading to the paralysis of the missile forces. The current solution is to remove these US-made chips and research alternatives. 
The mysterious death of PLA's AI genius Feng Yanghe is also related to this significant cybersecurity issue. Feng was summoned by the military commission to assist in resolving the underlying issues in the code of military chips. During his mission, Feng was involved in a fatal traffic accident, an extremely coincidental crash site, sparking various speculations about the cause of his death. The Chengying Rocket Torpedo Project at the secret base of Northwestern Polytechnical University was also troubled by an accident involving the Type 09111 nuclear submarine, hull number 417. The plan was to test the Chengying Rocket Torpedo from submarine 417 in the Yellow Sea on September 10, with the missile launching from the submarine, cruising on the sea surface, and diving underwater to attack the target submarine within 10 kilometers. However, this plan could not proceed as scheduled due to an unexplained accident involving submarine 417. On September 15th, the situation became tenser. The US chose to conduct military exercises in the same area where torpedo tests were originally scheduled on submarine 417. The Chinese military began to suspect whether the US had obtained sensitive information about the Chengying torpedo and was collecting critical environmental data in the area to analyze the technical performance and potential threats of the Chengying torpedo using advanced AI systems. The Chinese military commission conducted a profound assessment, concluding that the missile force's 60 years of research and development might have been in vain. Faced with such unprecedented security vulnerabilities and technical failures, Xi Jinping harshly reprimanded everyone involved in the military commission meeting, from members of the commission to subordinate officers. She also emphasized the need to avoid using American chips and to manufacture their own.